Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Three words together in his life before. I'm frightened. I know that, Sal. I'm just as frightened. Now, what men said this, Sam? Hmm? What men? The nice men, Daddy. The nice alien men. Behind my head. The secret place. They're waiting. Control one to all units. Control one to all units. The final phase is underway. I repeat, the final phase is underway. With a whimper to the grave. By Wally K. Daly. With John Shrapnel as Tom Harris, Maureen O'Brien as his wife Sally, Donald Hewlett as A.P. Smith, Patrick Troughton as George, Angela Thorne as the Prime Minister, and Timothy West as 642. With a whimper to the grave. Are you about ready, sir? I tap your glass of pretty water, Silkin, and let's get on with it. <laughs> Very good, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, pray silence for the Prime Minister. I'll keep it brief. As you all know, there was an alien threat. There's no denying the second factor. Some people around the world, these so-called six senses, did indeed develop amazing powers, walking into and out of each other's minds, mm -hmm. telepathy, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. an ability to read exactly what everyone around them was thinking. Mm -hmm. Very nasty. <laughs> but it seemed expedient at the time, against what appeared to be the double threat of the potential alien arrival, plus this six sensor thing, to form, for the very first time in history, a World Council. But the aliens didn't come. And so it's time, I and my party believe, to disband it. And I intend to call a general election immediately. <laughs> but gentlemen and ladies, of course. Thank you, Prime Minister. Rest easy in your beds. The alien threat is behind us forever. You can come in now, Daddy. They're waiting. You can come in now. Sam, for God's sake, shut up, shut up! Oh, Sam, I'm sorry. Lay Sam down to sleep now, Sally. It's time I went into his mind. No, you can't go. I've got to. You've done enough, Tom. It's time this whole nightmare ended. It's the only thing I can do. I owe it to the ones who accepted my teaching to find out the truth about the aliens and the sixth sense. You owe nothing to anybody except to me and baby Sam. Think of what we've already been through and just forget the others. Forget. Forget. How do you forget the fact that because of me, hundreds of people are now dead? People I taught. Their minds burnt out, cindered. How do you forget the looks on their faces? How? It wasn't your fault. You weren't to know that the children you taught would misuse the sixth sense power in such an evil way. It was my fault. How can I be expected to just forget, Sal? All right, perhaps forget is the wrong word. Perhaps start to live again would be better. They've gone now. The children have gone. <laughs> off into space, looking for aliens. They went looking in the wrong place. For the last 25 weeks, I've been striving to give everyone this amazing power that the aliens gave me. To stop the aliens taking over the Earth. And Sam says, come into my mind, Daddy, they're waiting. And now I realize, without a doubt, that they're already here. Oh. Yes, here, in this very room, sitting, waiting. 
at the back of our baby's mind. And now, I must go through his mind and talk with them. Control one to all units. Control one to all units. Earth subject known as Tom Harris is now approaching base and will enter shortly. The conduit being used is the mind of his own child. Harris must not be destroyed when he enters base. Repeat, he must not be destroyed. For the time being. Mrs. Harris. Mrs. Harris, I really do need to talk to you. How long has your husband been like this? How long since he... Went walking through our baby's mind. Walking through his mind? Yes. I can't explain. It's just something we people with this sixth sense power can do. And Tom did it. He lay down on the bed here, closed his eyes, and let his mind go walking through the mind of baby Sam. For a while, Sam lay equally still, but suddenly he sat up and wanted to play, and he was just a baby again. It was as though Tom had passed through his mind and moved to somewhere else, some other plane, and that Sam was no longer needed. And Tom hasn't moved from this spot since. Hasn't woken, but hasn't slept either, hasn't eaten, doesn't appear to breathe. I couldn't find a pulse. I can't read his mind. Almost as though he was... Finally, I thought I'd better call you in. See if it's time to put his body on a drip feed or something until he comes back. How long has he been like this? Three days now. You should have called me in sooner, Mrs. Harris. I might have been able to help. Might? You say might have been? Yes. I'm sorry, there's no easy way of saying what I have to say, so best I just say it and get it over with. I'm afraid your husband is dead, Mrs. Harris. No. Well, I'm sorry, he's dead. No! There we are, A.P., brewed to perfection. Darjeeling? A slightly more subtle blend. I think you'll like it. It's not too presumptuous. Mm, superb scent, sir. But not overstated. Quite. Ah, that is delicious. Uh, have you managed to finish your report yet? Well, I was just approaching the finale when you kindly summoned me to take tea. Any conclusion? Well, it seems the government got it right. The World Council would no longer serve any useful purpose. The aliens didn't arrive, as was promised, or perhaps hinted at might be a better word. Uh, one feels it would be somewhat churlish to say thank God, but uh, thank God. Amen to that. So we can once more rest safely in our beds. Our own elections out of the way, a new leader at the helm, new start to be made. Oh, fascinating result. It's quite amazing. Awful shock for the XPM, of course. Of course, you would have believed it. Mm. So, presumably with the world back to normal, we can all return to our familiar internecine stupidities and little local wars. Unfortunately, not quite so straightforward, A.P. Ah, pity that. It does rather explain this surprise tea party, though. <laughs> Afraid so. Mm. It seems Tom Harris and all the other Sixth Sense leaders throughout the world have apparently frozen in some sort of catatonic state, indistinguishable from death, and are all said to have gone to a secret place behind the mind for further discussions, allegedly, with the aliens. Ah, the PM's private secretary would like to see you within the hour to discuss this latest development. Uh, the new PM's PS? <laughs> be a pleasure to meet her. Or him, as the case may be. Uh, him, actually. PM's decided to keep on friend Silkin for the time being. Silkin? Not Silkin again, sir. I'm afraid so. Oh, damn. More tea, eh, P? And how long have you been with my department now, Geoffrey? Uh, two and a half years. Good. You do know our little way. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I must admit the reports I've received on you so far are excellent. Thank you, sir. And I think... No, I am actually sure that you will serve our purpose admirably. Purpose? One second. I'll close the door. One can't be too careful these days. Mr. Vera, if anyone calls, I'm not to be disturbed. Except for the PM, of course. Very good, Mr. Silvian. Better security conscious and safe than slack and sorry. Of course. Now, you've heard of the religious manifestation section of the Ministry of Defence. I've heard of them, yes. But I'd be hard pushed to say what they get up to. Well, since World War II, they have checked out ESP, PSI, telepathy, the whole gamut of the lunatic fringe mental telepathic shooting match. Oh. Flying saucers through to things that go woo-woo. 
in the night. I say, that's rather good, sir. Yes. Now, Geoffrey, you are going to be attached to the RM section. Oh, well, I do rather enjoy working for you, sir. For your department, that is. We do seem, if you don't mind saying so, to match up quite well. You have rather missed the point, Geoffrey. Can I, sir? Yes, totally. Oh, awfully sorry. That's all right, to be expected. You see, you will still be working for me as well, but no one at the RM section will be aware that you are reporting back to me. They won't? No. One other thing. Sir? Put this on, would you? And wear it at all times until the operation is successfully concluded, that is. A necklace? No, not a necklace, Geoffrey. It's a band, a metallic band, yes. A necklet, perhaps. But a necklace? No. Word gets out that one is giving one's junior staff necklaces, Geoffrey, and before you know it, all sorts of unlikely rumours will be flying about the place. Oh, go. <sighs> now, as you know from the press, Sally Harris can allegedly read people's minds. Really, sir? I didn't know that. Allegedly. Wearing that necklet when you finally get into her presence will ensure that she cannot read yours. If the boffins are to be believed, it'll block off your brain waves completely. And as it is essential to the plan I have in mind that she doesn't know what I intend, best you wear it all the time from now on. Very good, sir. I think I'll be able to manage without having any brain waves for a while. <laughs> Beg pardon? <laughs> Were you saying it stops brain waves, sir? And I was saying I could do without any brain waves for a little while. I think we can do without any juvenile attempts at humour. The world's not out of the woods yet, you know, Geoffrey. Sorry, Uncle. And never again refer to our family connection, Geoffrey. You achieved your present job purely on your own ability. Always remember that. Oh, yes, sir. I mean, yes, sir. Mrs. Harris, your husband's body must be removed now. It's not a body. It's Tom you're talking about, and he's alive. Somewhere in there, he's alive. Look, there's no rigor mortis, no loss of color. He's not dead, just in some sort of very deep sleep. Medically, Mrs. Harris, he is dead. And my official duty is to report this and arrange to the appropriate authorities to remove the corpse. Do you know who you're talking to, Doctor? Do you know what I'm capable of doing? What powers we sixth sensors possess? Mrs. Harris. Don't you realize I could lift you to the ceiling just by thinking about it? Oh, 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 oh Mrs. Harris. Oh, put me down. Turn oh. you upside down and try to shake some sense into you. Oh, 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 no, no, the blood's rushing to my head. Oh, tell me the right be wrong, Mrs. Harris. Oh, please, oh, I'm not a young man. Without moving from where I stand, I could open the front door. Happening. And that window. And create enough draft to blow you back to your car, you stupid, insensitive, heartless little man. My husband is not dead. Mr. Harris? I heard. Oh, God, I heard. It feels as though a thousand darts, every nerve end screaming. Mr. Harris? A pain! It's too much. Computer indicates potential breakdown of subject is once more imminent. My arms, my legs, my head, everywhere. Agony! Mr. Harris, you have no body here. You are just a spirit. The very essence of yourself. Help me! Listen. Concentrate on my voice. It's simply ghost pains in non-existent limbs. Oh. Gently, Mr. Harris. Surface gently. It's only your imagination. Computer indicates imminent breakdown of subject's consciousness. <laughs> Subject unconscious. Repeat. Subject once more unconscious. Right, thank you, lads. Well, that's about it, Prime Minister. It's funny calling you Prime Minister, and it's not five minutes since everyone was calling me the same thing. That's democracy, George, as we both very well know. Oh, I know, but I mean, you're not getting in. I can hardly credit it even now. Don't be hurtful, George. The signs were there for you all to see. It's just that your lot all decided to close their eyes to the reality. Oh, I suppose you're right. Oh, well. George, I have to ask, 
Those curtains, did you choose them, or do they actually belong here? Well, they come with the place, I'm afraid. It's simply ghastly colour. They'll have to go forthwith. Might put you off your morning coffee. Guaranteed. <laughs> well, Silken will see to that, eh? if you let him know. George, what's the latest on this Harris man? Oh, him. To all intents and purposes, medically dead. Local doctor passed it along. No pulse, no heartbeat, no brainwave pattern, nout. The wife is standing by the body and refusing to let any of our medical people take it away for, for want of a better word, as Silkin would no doubt put it, extra test. But presumably a more precise phrasing would be confirmation of death and disposal of the uh, corpse. I could say that. Disposal at least seems sensible, just in case like. Of course, it's no longer my decision. The ball's in your court now. Not quite, George. I had this in from the Secretary of the World Council just before you arrived. He says they were on the point of winding up when this. Oh, good Lord. All the Sixth Sense leaders in the world? Yes, it would appear they've all gone catatonic. So God knows what's being plotted now. There's only one thing to do, Marge. Exactly. You got it right first time. Tom Harris's body must be disposed of. Before his mind comes back from wherever it's travelling to repossess it, the same is being done in every capital city in the world. Our problem is how to get Mrs. Harris and those amazing powers of hers away from her husband's body long enough to attend to it. And I think I know the perfect fellow for the job. Absolutely perfect. Good. Thought you might. Control one to all units. Control one to all units. All subjects showing signs of unexpected stress and resistance to revival. Master computer indicates that it will facilitate their revival if subjects are allowed to create a body and environment for themselves. All units will implement this immediately. Body copies to be created. Body copies to be created. Can you hear me? Yes. Do you know who you are? No. Do you know who you are? No. Your name is Harris. Tom Harris. Tom Harris. Open your eyes, Tom. Open your eyes. Oh, God. I'm blind. I'm blind. There's just blackness, endless blackness. Oh, no, you're simply not allowing yourself to see. You are in the most perfect, most idyllic environment that your heart can desire and your mind can visualize. Close your eyes once more. Good. Now, listen. What do you hear? A brook. Bird song. Insects. Do you know where you are? In the country. A, a quiet place I used to go to with someone I loved. I can't remember the name. The sun always seemed to shine there. So beautifully warm. Can you feel it on your face now? Ye yes. It's a summer day. And I can feel the grass mossy under my back. I'm being shaded from the sun by, by a tree that's between me and the brook. Over that way. The breeze shifts the leaves occasionally. Now you can open your eyes again. I was right. It's the same copse where I used to lie on a summer day with... with some, someone. But how did I get here? Your mind brought you here. It's as simple as that. Where are you? I can hear you quite clearly, but I just can't see you. I'm here. Oh, yes, yes. Now I see. But not your face. The sun behind you, it's, it's hazing you. I'll move a little out of its light. You'll be able to see me clearly then. But you know already, don't you? It's not possible. It's just not possible. You're dead. I'm sorry, but you're dead. I was at your funeral with Mum all those years ago. I'd like it to be you, but I know that's just not possible. I'll move so you can see me then. Dad! Dad, is it you? Is it really you? Yes. For a little while, son... You brought me back to life. <clears throat> oh, uh, take a seat, would you, A.P.? Well, 
Good to see you. And you, sir. Is it Harris again? Afraid so. You've heard. Yes, my chief told me. Catatonic state. By earthly standards, a dead man. Same thing being reported right around the world. Exactly. It's fascinating. No, not fascinating, A.P. We have to face this new danger by knowing exactly what is being planned. And you, as a friend of the Harris family... Hardly a friend, Mr. Sokin. On the few occasions I met them, they say hello to me, and then, acting on orders, I have them locked up in a 20th century version of the dungeons. I don't think... But Mrs. Harris trusts you. She may talk to you when she wouldn't talk to anyone else. I was rather hoping that one had put this whole sixth sensor business behind one, sir. Well, A.P., one hasn't. So, I suppose one ought to head back to the village of Oringbury with all speed. See if she'd like a chat. One most certainly ought. Oh. Tea first, of course. But of course. Am I dead? Am I dead as well as you? No, Tom, you're not. You're somewhere between life and death. Outside your mind and adrift from your real body, but not dead. Hmm. At this moment, your real body is where you left it. Your cottage in Orlingbury. Remember? But of course. It's coming back. Uh, Sally and, 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 and baby Sam and... I walked through his mind. Yes. Now, to all intents and purposes, that body, the one you left behind, is dead. Mm -hmm. And could be proved so by any test known to medical science. And Sally? She doesn't believe it. Purely instinctive, she has no proof, but simply believes. So, I'm not dead. I'm not alive. Well, what am I? You are the spirit of Tom Harris. And that is why the body at Orlingbury appears to be dead. You left it behind and traveled through your son's mind to this, our domain. The garden peaceful garden. Is this what we can expect after death? I mean, is this where you are? Oh, no, Tom. Like the body you're wearing now, this whole environment is your creation. But why? Why should I produce such a thing? It was decided it was for the best. When they tried to bring you to consciousness, just your spirit, you were in agony. If you lose a limb, you go on feeling pain, agonizing pain, even though the limb is only a ghost. You've been separated from your whole body, Tom. Do you mean... God, yes, now I remember. I heard a voice calling when I was in Sam's mind, and, and, and there was almost a velvet archway, lighter than the darkness around. And that's where the voice was coming from. And I floated towards it and went through, and then... Agony. Excruciating agony in every muscle, every fiber, every sinew, tearing my mind with the pain. Yes, but simply ghost pains. So they decided to let you create a new temporary body here as well as an environment in which your mind could be at peace. Do you mean all of this, the grass, the trees, the brook, imagination? Slightly more than imagination. Your creation is perfect in every detail, Tom. You could cut these trees down, and they would take many years to grow. Dam the brook, and the water would flood. Tonight the sun will sink, and the stars will shine, and the sun will rise again tomorrow in a peerless blue sky. It's your world, Tom. Perfect in every detail, captured from the memory of a happy day, locked deep in your mind. And why have they called me here? You are one of the chosen few, Tom. Selected host bodies to receive unique powers beyond human imagining. Some months ago, you were brought here unconscious, kept for ten days, and they revealed to you the knowledge of your sixth sense. What's more, they gave you the ability to pass on that knowledge to others. This also happened to chosen people taken from every country on your planet. It was a last desperate attempt to save the Earth from its own stupidity. The plan failed. Now you and the other host bodies with the same powers as yourself have been chosen to perform another task. Which is? To oversee the end of man's reign on Earth. Control one to all units. Control one to all units. Emergency, emergency. Host bodies worldwide are being destroyed. Host bodies worldwide are being destroyed. Units to protect all remaining bodies. Units to protect all remaining bodies. Emergency, emergency. All remaining bodies to be protected. Gentlemen, gentlemen, order, please. 
Let us have some order. Take your example from the ladies present. The only reason we're staying quiet, Prime Minister, is because we're absolutely dumbstruck by your suggestion. Yes, it's yes. not my suggestion, Vera. It's a World Council policy decision. Up the World Council. I'll have none of that sort of language in my cabinet, David, and don't you forget it. Mm, we've got a chance to start afresh. Yes, yes. Elected by a landslide and already we're slipping into their ways. Yes. Stop! Yes. Stop! Yes. What has been suggested is simple and sensible and is indeed being carried out at this very moment by 95% of world governments. The bodies of these chosen people are simply being disposed of. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Their bodies are medically dead. Simply corpses, and as such, they will be incinerated. How can you be so sure? If I wasn't sure, I wouldn't even consider the idea, even though the World Council demanded it. You know me well enough to believe that, Ray. I suppose you're right. Our medical authorities are in total agreement. Tom Harris is dead, and as he is a possible health risk, he is to be cremated immediately. Surely burial would be just as efficient? Yes. Yes. The thought of festering fingers clawing their way out of wet clay on a rainy night in Reading some few years hence is not to be contemplated. Uh, PM's right. I think if it's got to be done, cremation's the obvious answer. Thank you, Vera. Good. It's agreed, then. Troops have already been sent to surround Orlingbury, and the wife will shortly be, for want of a better word, lured away. Silkin. Yes, Prime Minister. Perhaps you'll be good enough to let the Cabinet know the plan. Very good, sir. Uh, Mom. What an attachment, sir. With me? Yes, a charming young man, Geoffrey Palmer. In fact, he's a personal recommendation from on high. We've simply got to face the facts, A.P. New blood is required departmentally. We're none of us getting any younger. True. Very true, Charles. Age has no favourites. Given enough time, he'll wrinkle us all to prunishness. Beg pardon? Uh, prunishness. One's innate tendency to end up looking like a prune. A prune? Wrinkled. Ah, <laughs> I see. Prunishness. Yes, sir. Uh, accepting the fact that the department needs new blood, why have I been picked for the dubious honour of acting as nursemaid? It is thought, Orlingbury, the Sally Harris visit is a two-handed job. As Silkin says, it would be as well to get her away from the body for a while. Take her for a walk, perhaps. Silkin says? Yes, so she can think the situation over. But she won't do that unless we can guarantee a babysitter for her husband's body and no action from the troops. And can we guarantee that? Yes. I will be giving her my word, Charles. And you know what I'd feel under those circumstances if anything should go awry. Nothing will go awry. Dash it all, AP. She can read the mind of anyone for miles around. Our chappies haven't come up with anything to combat that. Mm, I was forgetting. All right, Charles. I know you well enough to take your word. Top you up. Ah. And Mr. Smith's assistant, a superb young chap called Geoffrey Palmer, will inform us when both Smith and Mrs. Harris are clear of the house and a helicopter will be immediately sent in to remove the... uh, Course. Any questions? Uh, yes, yes, yes. How can Smith's assistant, this Jeffrey, whatever, know the full plan if it's not possible to let Smith know? Mr. Palmer is actually a member of my staff, as it happens, uh, and simply a temporary member of the RM section. Uh, on attachment, as it were. Sounds suspiciously like shenanigans to me. Well, surely she'll just read his mind in any case if she's got these powers and the whole plot will be revealed. Ah, but she won't be able to. I thought you said she was telepathic. Yes. Yes. Silken? He's wearing something top secret that our boffins have just come up with. A thin metal band that he wears around his neck which stops her reading his mind. I gave him one to wear before he left. What, a necklace, you mean? No, not a necklace, sir. It's a thin metal band. A necklace, perhaps. Sounds like a necklace to me. And me. It's not a necklace. It's a necklace. (laughs) Thank you, Silkin. Tom, listen to me. I don't know where you are, what place you've walked to, but please come back. They're surrounding the cottage with troops. There's tanks, guns, hundreds of soldiers. My mind is growing tired. Tom, I need to rest, to sleep, but I daren't. Oh, please come home, Tom. Please, oh, please come. Oh, no, not again. Enough. I've had enough. I'm going to look into your mind, whoever you are, and if there's any desire to harm us, 
I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt you very hard indeed. Mum. It's Mum. Tom. She's come at last. Mum. Oh, 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 there, there, love. Come on. Everything's going to be all right now. Everything's going to be all right. There. And they will reveal to you shortly how man is They keep saying they when we talk, but you're at one with them, aren't you? Yes, Tom, I am. And you're not really my father, are you? Oh, you look like him, you speak like him, but some... Essential warmth is missing. You're not really him at all, are you? Just another creation of my imagination, painted from memory. I'm sorry, you're right. It was felt his presence would be comforting to you. Well, if you're not my father, then I'd prefer you didn't look like him. I loved him. The decision is yours, Tom. Mr. Harris! Mr. Harris. I am, after all, fashioned by your mind. Simply imagine what you wish me to look like, or who you wish me to be. Yourself. Just show me yourself. You're alien, aren't you? Interesting. When you think alien, so many pictures flit through your mind. Will I be a gigantic spider, or the classic bug-eyed monster, or a repellent slug-like green mass, perhaps? The true me, I'm afraid, is much less inspiring. Ah! <sighs> It's too bright. The light, it's blinding me. eyes will soon accustom. Look beyond the aura that surrounds me. Look to the central core. Oh, now I can see. I can see you. A spark of light. A tiny spark of light. Yes, this is what I look like. This is the essential me. And you, Mr. Harris, underneath that earthly form are exactly the same. Simply a spark. It's been called the soul. The anima, the id, the spirit, so many things. And it's constant in all life forms throughout this teeming universe. It is self, the naked self, revealed. When I joined our M section, Mr. Mama, I never dreamt I would be called on to be a gazelle. Me neither, sir. Crossing rutted fields, avoiding the cowpats, is one particular occupational hazard I could well have done without. Exactly, sir. Do you ever disagree with anything, Mr. Palmer? Beg pardon? Do you ever disagree? Disagree? Yes. You must be one of the most amiable chaps I've ever come across. Oh, uh, well, not too often, sir. I always feel the best way to learn is by generally accepting that my superior usually knows best, if you see what I mean. It doesn't do to quibble over their every utterance. No, I don't suppose it does. Uh, you wouldn't know Mr. Silkin by any chance? No. Well, naturally, I've heard of him, uh, being in the department, but I couldn't say I know him. A uh, pity. I think with your philosophy as regards one's superior superiority, you would have both got along handsomely. You there! Oh! Well, not very much mistaken. It probably means us. Yes, sir, probably. The way he left onto that slight hummock and the rather menacing way he's waving his machine gun in our direction is a fair indication he would like us to stop where we are. You'd agree? Of course. Of course. Mm. He's coming over. The most observant, Mr. Palmer. You two mind telling me what you're up to climbing about here? This is a military area, out of bounds to the public, so push off quick before I'm forced to run you in. We are not public, my good man, and we will not push off. Mr. Smith here is one of Her Majesty's senior RM section inspectors. Inspectors, reporters more like, climbing up hummocks with mud on his boots and grass on his bum. Your choice of words also leaves a lot to be desired. Can you temper your language or I will be forced to report you to your superior? Let him be, Mr. Palmer. The corporal deserves his little bit of fun before being brought down to earth with a resounding thump. Oh, don't you take that tone of voice with me, mate. Get or... me General Thompson's headquarters on a few telephones. You are. Who do you think you are? Now, I'm telling you, Mr. A.P. Smith, Minister of Defence, R.M. Section, and his assistant, Mr. Geoffrey Palmer, require immediate transport to the Harris Cottage. What? The corporal, if you're not on that phone in a very few seconds, in a very few hours, you will be a private. That I promise you on my word as a gentleman. Well, I can't... I'll give you five seconds and five seconds only. Count, Geoffrey. At once, sir. Five, four... Right in there, I say, that was awfully good, sir. Well, it's not my way to be overly forceful in the normal course of events, Geoffrey, but occasionally one really has to put on a good show. Would you agree? Of course, sir. One hundred percent, sir. Tom! 
sorry to disturb you, Prime Minister, but there's been a development. Is the body out of that cottage yet? Not quite, Prime Minister. Not quite? That's a ridiculous statement, Silkin. It either is or it isn't. What you actually mean is no. Well, yes, I suppose I do really mean no. Well, why not say no? Sorry. No. Thank you. So, what's the development? Mrs. Harris's mother is currently at the cottage and will very shortly be leaving and taking the baby out of the village and back to her flat in town. And? And it has struck me very forcibly that as Mr. Harris travelled to wherever he's travelled through the mind of the child, if, by any stretch of the imagination, he was still alive, he would most certainly need the mind of the said child to return again. Do you see what I'm thinking, therefore, Prime Minister? Silkin, if you're even contemplating suggesting what I think you're contemplating suggesting, I would suggest you leave this office now and never return. You forget, as well as being Prime Minister, I am also a grandmother. Twice over. But no, I wasn't contemplating suggesting what you're probably thinking I was going to suggest. Good. I can assure you the prospect of going down in history as the first British Herod has no appeal whatsoever. Protective custody does seem highly sensible. Protective custody? For both the baby and his, I'm sure, delightful grandmother. Somewhere safe. One of our underground atom shelters, for example. They're very well stocked and totally invincible. I don't like it. But I can see you're probably right. Put it in hand, Silkin. Very good, Prime Minister. Oh, Silkin. Yes, ma'am. Any news on the new curtains yet? Uh, not quite, ma'am. Silkin. Uh, that is... No. And this light, the spark that is me, reveals the truth, my truth, to all who care to look. There can be no prevarication, no deceit, while, as your earthly poets would have it, the very soul of life itself is bared. I simply... What is it? What is it? You're, you're pulsing. The colour within your spark is shifting about through the spectrum. I, I can see pain and hurt and sorrow. The suffering of many innocent people that you feel some way responsible for. What is it? Tell me. They're dead. I'm sorry. They're all dead. Who? All of your fellow sixth senses. All the host bodies, all who walked through the mine to visit with us. They're all dead. Every last one of them. You are the sole survivor. But I thought we were invulnerable. Not while your spirit is away from the body. It is the spirit that creates the power. I have just been informed that within 30 minutes of the World Council Directive, every vacated body except yours was taken away and burnt. Burnt? But why was I spared? You weren't. You were simply luckier than the rest. Your wife, sensing danger, is protecting your body... We feel she will soon be lured away. And then you will be at their mercy. What will happen exactly? At the moment your body is destroyed, your spirit, wherever it is, will be sucked remorselessly back into your body. And you will suffer with it the agony of being burnt alive. And you can do nothing? It is a primeval force we are incapable of controlling. Your only hope is that your son will remain by your body so that we can use him to implant protection. Then there is hope. Sally will trust him to no one. No one. You will call me to let me know you've arrived safely back at your flat with Sally. Of course I will. Who is it? Shh. Let me listen. Oh, it's all right. It's an ex-enemy, now an old friend, a Mr. A.P. Smith. He's worried about me, and he's going to ask me to take a walk and have a chat. (laughs) Even though his feet are killing him. <laughs> He's even commandeered a jeep to bring him here. Oh, oh dear. The soldier driving it's thinking rather rude thoughts about him. Quite unreputable. A jeep. And that's I could hitch a lift. He's coming to the door now. You can ask him for a raise. Hey, hey. Will you believe me if I tell you I'm ever so pleased to see you? Mrs. Harris, how kind of you to say so. The pleasure is really all mine. I shared a little with my new assistant, Mr. Jeffrey Palmer. How do you do? Hello. This is my mum, AP. How do you do? Hello. Do you think I could borrow that um, jeep thing for a lift for myself and the baby? It's an awful walk. Of course, station. feel uh, free. Uh, Taxpayers' money, after all. Jeffrey, <laughs> uh, go and ask the scowling soda to hang on a sec. Very good, sir. I'll just give a quick uh, itchy coo to the baby, and then you can both be on your way. Itchy coo, itchy coo. <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, uh, then, uh, I'd better be off with him quick before you change your mind again, darling. Bye-bye, love. Bye. Bye, Bye Sam, love. Be good. Uh, uh, my 
Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. I, I really am Mr. Smith. Oh, Sorry about right. that. Just the excitement Santa. of people arriving. Come on, Sam, Santa. darling. Santa. But I love... Um, A.P. Yes? You wouldn't lie to me. Mrs. Harris, I couldn't lie to you. You've looked into my mind. You know there's no chicanery. Simply a walk. A chance to try to talk you peacefully into letting your husband's body be taken to hospital for further tests. You will never get me to change my mind. We shall see. Anyway, I'm pleased to get you out in the fresh air. If you don't mind me saying so, you're looking rather peaky. It's the first time I've left Tom's side since this awful business began. Oh, it's so... Good to taste the fresh air. I must admit the rustic charm is somewhat spoiled by the tanks, helicopters, gun emplacements, and all those soldiers bobbing up and down on the distant horizon. Not unlike one of those rifle booths where one can have pot shots of ducks for 10p. More likely 30 nowadays. <laughs> Inflation even gets the ducks. <laughs> it's funny, Mrs. Harris. The employment of so much arms and armory for one defenseless woman and her hopefully sleeping husband. Not quite defenseless. You just don't know how much self-control it's taken me in the last few days to stop myself turning their silly tanks upside down and tying knots in their rifles, if not worse things. And could you? Oh, yes. The available power is quite fantastic. Frighteningly so. See that dead tree over there? The tall one by that little hillock? Yes. Watch. Without even a cry of timber... Thirty-foot elm bites the dust. Or doesn't, as the case may be. Good God, replant and covered in foliage. Just by thinking about it. Yes, the merest thought is sufficient. I'm frightened of my own capabilities, A.P. I just hope they don't push me too far. I'd hate to get really angry with someone. They could end up dead. Yes, Gloria? There's a Mr. Palmer on Red Priority One. Says it's urgent. It most certainly is, Gloria. Switch it through. Hello? Sir? Speaking. Where on earth have you been, Geoffrey, and why has it taken so long? Oh, she took an awful lot of convincing, sir. But Smith finally got her to agree. He let her search through his mind, and when she found there was nothing being plotted and the troops would not storm the cottage, she agreed to take a walk. What about your mind, Geoffrey? Oh, I hovered in the background looking innocent. She ignored me, concentrated all her attention on AP. Oh, good. My necklace obviously works, as she didn't pick up any stray thoughts. It seems she just accepted the fact that Smith was in charge and that I'm here simply as part of the package. Fine. I'll get the helicopter underway. It should be with you in a matter of minutes. Get outside now and watch for it. Just see the body into the helicopter and away from there as quick as you can. Very good, sir. Too late. Yes, I'm afraid so. Your son was taken away from the cottage before we could get to his sleeping mind. And now your wife has also been lured away. I'm afraid at this moment it looks very black. Why can't I just go back myself now and reactivate my body? Then they'd know I wasn't dead. Surely they wouldn't cremate somebody they knew was alive. You can't return. There is no suitable conduit available. No one lying unconscious by your body that you can use as a pathway to guide you back. I'm afraid you're trapped here, Mr. Harris. No. Yes, I'm sorry, but you are. You're trapped. Until they destroy your body, that is, then... We will, of course, go on using our best endeavours to save you. But I fear it is already too late. I don't know what the aliens intend. But I do know that Tom won't pass on the gift of sixth sense to anyone else. It went too badly wrong. Too many people died. You still call it a gift? Yes. Properly controlled and in the right hands. It's the most wonderful thing that's ever been offered to mankind. No more lies or deceit. Feats of unbelievable achievement in everyone's grasp just by thinking about it. We could reshape the earth. Perhaps we need our lies and deceit, Mrs. Harris. Perhaps we also like the earth, shaped the way it is. The aliens' toys are tarnished. I want nothing to do with them. You missed the point. This isn't some gift from outer space. It's simply a skill we all possess, always have possessed, but have lost sight of. A whole new era could open up to mankind, a new world. A brave new world, indeed. The ant mind a reality. No. Yes, minds that can be read, can be controlled. Mrs. Harris, you are so powerful, you could kill somebody simply by nipping their mind. If you decide they will die, they surely will. Am I right? Yes. May I ask, how often have you been tempted to kill so far, Mrs. Harris? 
How many times the soldiers have called at your door and you've been within an ace of being a murderess? And you're a nice person, a gentle lady. But think of this. Your gift in the hands of a psychopath, a Hitler. The doctor you threw out of the cottage didn't die, Mrs. Harris, but he did end up in hospital with three broken ribs, and that is the sort of power I personally would prefer not to possess. I should like to go on fuming when the world makes me angry, rather than have to force myself not to kill. Well, Silkin, the plan is underway, ma'am. Smith has managed to get Mrs. Harris out of the cottage, and a helicopter is on its way there now to pick up the body. We've got to be very sure it is a body. Oh, Silkin, I just hope we're doing the right thing. I can see no alternative, ma'am. And the baby? Safe underground, in the fallout shelter with the grandmother. <laughs> Apparently screaming the place down, asking to be taken to its father. You find that amusing, Silkin? No. I... It... Sorry. There is a medical team underground with them, as you suggested, in case it falls ill. Good. Any difficulty convincing the grandmother? No. We simply explained to her that the baby might be in danger of being kidnapped by a foreign power. Kid... Oh, I see. Very clever. Silkin... I'll admit that your department do get their tasks performed with alacrity. Thank you. One does one's utmost to be efficient. But I'm not terribly sure I shall come to like their methods. Sorry, but it does seem to be for the best, ma'am. Yes. Unfortunately, you're probably right. You could be right, A.P. I just don't know anymore. My mind is so tired with turning it over and over that I can't think straight. <gasps> what is it, Mrs. Harris? The helicopter. What helicopter? The one that passed us a few minutes back going towards the cottage. What about it? It's been helicopters buzzing around all it morning. different. I've just realised I couldn't read them. Read them? It's become almost a habit. I glance into the minds of anyone I suspect of wanting to harm us, but it's just struck me. I couldn't read theirs. And I couldn't read the mind of the man you brought with you, A.P. It's impossible. The first time it's happened. I'm going to the cottage. Now. Good Lord. Where are you? She's gone. Looks like I've gone at the meat, Ted. I don't smell like a dead and Vince. But what the devil's taking so long? Nothing, just coming. You chappies ready? Yes, sir. All right, get it on the chopper. Come on, come on. Mind if you ask that door? That's it, then, Jim. Yeah, many thanks, wife. Off as quick as you can. <sighs> ah, jolly well done, Geoffrey, even if I do say so myself. Right, better phone in. Next. <laughs> Lord, where on earth did you come from? Where's Tom? He is gone, Mrs. Harris. What? He is gone. Mm. Bastard! <laughs> Mrs. Harris. Good Lord. Why not just Jeffrey writhing on the floor over there? You promised me, AP. You promised me he'd be safe. He is safe, surely. You. Tell him. You could have killed Tell me. Tell him. He's been taken. What? Without my being told? Where? I am not at liberty to say. You will say, you little tyke. I have to shake it out of you. I gave my word. You ripped my shirt. I'll rip more than your shirt if you don't tell. What are you trying to hide at your throat? Nothing. It's a necklace. You, you know, it's a necklace. It's just decorative. Is this what's preventing you reading his mind? We'll soon see. No, it's a... Ah! <laughs> what it was. A protective device. I can read him now. Tom's in the helicopter. The crew have protection as well. He's working for a man called Silken. My God, you're a spy for that toad Silken. They're taking Tom to... Cremate him. Cremate him? But he's not dead. Of course he's dead. He's not, you fool. I must stop them. You can't. You can't touch their minds. You're too late. No. But I can stop the engine. Mrs. Harris, you're going to kill everyone on that craft. Do you really want to be a murderess? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Tom. Tom. I'm sorry to have to tell you that your body has been removed from the cottage and is at this moment on its way to a crematorium. 
Surely there must be something you can do. Nothing. How long have I gone? A little more than minutes, I'm afraid. <sighs> Strange. We clutch life to us, wrap it around us tight like a cloak to keep out the cold reality of death. And we know in some quiet corner of our brain, we know that we will never die. Others will, of course, our friends, our loved ones, but not us. We are immune. Mr. Harris, do you wish to know the truth about death? Am I going to die? Yes. Then there's nothing else that's worth knowing. I'll go and face the last great adventure, as prepared or unprepared as the next man. If one really knew the truth, the final truth, it'd be inclined to remove all sense of adventure from the occasion. I'd like to be left alone now. Very well, as you wish. Mr. Harris, I really am very sorry. Coffin coming through now, Barry. In she goes. Just keep your eye on it. Make sure it goes up all right. It's going like good and already. It's been made out of cheap bit of timber, if you ask me. Well, job, apparently. Ashes to be kept on one side for an hour Barry! by the... What is it? Quick, come and look. What's so exciting about watching a coffin burn? It's about the 30th we've done this week. Not the coffin. Coffin's well gone. It's the body. What about it? I've never seen how like it. Come on, then, mush over so I can have a look. Oh. oh, my God. It's not possible. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Mr. Harris, I'm sorry to have to report that all our efforts were to no avail. Mr. Harris... A show. Simply an empty show. Control one. Control one, this is 642 reporting. The subject, Tom Harris, is no longer with us, Control. He has been drawn back. I repeat, he has been drawn back to his death. I will shortly arrange for the removal, 642. You may return to normal duties. I will spend a little time here first. I find this environment he's created quite soothing. Very good, 642. As you wish. Inform me when ready to return. Control 1 to 642, out. Yes. I will inform you. I will be in touch shortly. You'll pay for this, Smith. You'll most certainly pay for this. How are you, Jeffy? I just sit tight and not say a word. Hmm. Mrs. Harris, how long would it take you to give me your powers? You could give them to me, couldn't you? Yes, but... How long? No more than a few minutes. Good. Please do so, then. But you mustn't. Quiet. I thought you said you wouldn't have your sixth sense revealed under any circumstances. Under any normal circumstances, no, but this is different. My honour has been impugned. I think a little journey to that secret alien place behind the mind to discover once and for all whether your husband is alive or dead may redress the balance to a small degree. You do all that for me? Being awfully honest, not for you, Mrs. Harris, for me and my peace of mind. Right, the sooner we get started, the sooner I'll be on my way. But how can you get there? Tom used the mind of baby Sam. I'm sure you need an undeveloped or vacant mind as a pathway. There's nobody you could use. <laughs> Isn't there? What are you looking at me like that? No. You wasn't dare. Come, Jeffrey, stop being so unsporting. After all, assistants are provided to assist. You check that with your Mr. Silkin sometime. Gentlemen, it is a fact. The major in charge of the detail confirmed it himself. Mr. Silkin, Mr. Silkin, be good enough to give us all the details. Yes, ma'am. It would appear that the two men who are on boiler room duty at the crematorium... Uh, I do actually have their names here somewhere. Tell the bells, the names of the material. Just get on with the story. Yeah. Yeah. Very well. They ran into the chapel, gibbering that a miracle was taking place. Everyone present went to the boiler room, including the major that we've already heard mentioned, and viewed the scene through a little spy hole built into the side of the boiler. The body of Mr. Harris was, and I quote, floating in the flames and completely untouched by them. Not one hair on his body had even been scorched. It would now appear that Mr. Harris, whether dead or alive, is totally invulnerable to immolation. But it's 
fantastic. Amazing. I'm picking up people's thoughts from miles around. And now you've learned to control the input. It makes it easier. You can select individual minds to look at. Yes, I can do already. Invasion of privacy. I keep quiet if I were you, Geoffrey. I've just checked yours, and that was a bit of an eye-opener. A naughty bit of nepotism. An uncle in influential places. Huh. That's just one side of it, telepathy. Now try lifting something. Oh, good thinking. Now, what shall I try first? Oh, of course, obvious. Oh, I say... Put me down! Put me down! Oh, oh sorry, Jeff. I didn't mean to bang your head on the ceiling like that. I haven't quite got the knack. Uh, down you come. <laughs> oh, oh, so sorry. Just think it in there as light as a feather. I shall report this, this outrage. Oh, Jeffrey, can't you see this is more fun than my first train set? Right. Now, Mrs. Harris, look into my mind. You think Tom's alive? You really think Tom's alive? Yes. Somewhere in my tired old bones, I'm sure of it. Now, it's time I went off to find him. Sorry, Geoffrey. Time you went to sleep, huh, son? But... Mm. He sleeps like a baby. I'll lie down beside him, then go walking through his mind. Bye, Mrs. Harris. If I don't come back, I'd really like you to know how sorry I am I inadvertently betrayed you. It's all right, A.P. I know it was none of your doing. A.P., safe voyage. A.P., already gone. Emergency, emergency. Unknown Earthman approaching base. Repeat, unknown Earthman approaching base. Conduit being used is low-grade British civil servant being used against his will. All units to intercept and attend... All units to intercept and attend. I'm afraid things are getting worse, Prime Minister. Worse? Yes, I'm afraid so. It would appear that our man from the RM section has gone over to their side. You mean the man who gave the necklace to? It wasn't a necklace. It was a... Well, it sounds like a necklace to me. No, I assure Stop quibbling, ma'am. We don't give a damn if you give the whole of your male staff earrings and matching bracelets. (laughs) As long as you manage to give us the facts without this constant argy-bargy about what to call them. Ray, would you calm down, please? We can do without that sort of vulgar display. Well... (laughs) Mr. Silkin. Ma'am? You presumably mean A.P. Smith has gone over to them. Yes, ma'am. It was reported by a Corporal Wilkes who was monitoring conversation in the cottage. Smith suddenly spoke to him. Frightened the poor chap half to death. Smith was obviously reading his mind. Did your chap Palmer ring in? No. Not a word has been heard for over an hour. I think he must be a prisoner, or even possibly dead. Gentlemen, ladies, we are faced with a major crisis. We are the only country who haven't managed to dispose of this threat in our midst. All the rest have been safely incinerated, but we've ended up with a body we can't dispose of, a man from the Ministry who has presumably gone over to their side. This situation is not just a threat to Britain, but to the whole world, and it must be eliminated. I therefore intend to immediately transfer the village of Orlingbury plus 15 miles radius round it into the jurisdiction of the World Council and declare it international territory and then let the council deal with the problem in any way they see fit. Now, will you excuse me? Geoffrey, if you only knew what a wonderland your mind is, you'd never think an asinine thought in your life again. I've never seen anything like it. A glittering, pulsating palace, alight with neutrons and electrons, sparks of colour beyond imagining. So, which way do I float now through this endless wonderland? Where lies the gate to that other secret world, at the entrance to which I must stand, hopeful that open sesame still has some power to move? This way. Oh, your non-existent ears are hopefully deceiving you, A.P. This way. Well, unfortunately, they're not. It would appear I've been spotted by the mind's equivalent of a gamekeeper. Well, who am I to disobey? Almost an arch head. Solid velvet blackness beyond. Is that where the voice is coming from, I wonder? This way. Yes, it would appear so. Somewhat scary, but it ensures the quarry finds its way to the entrance, or trap. There's only one way to find out. And here I stand on the threshold of the unknown. One step from discovery. Courage, J.P. Just one step and you're through. Yes. Well, here goes. Prevarication never solved anything straight through without more ado. Immediately. 
Yes. Here goes. Nice of you to come, George. Let's see you haven't managed the new curtains, then. No. And it looks as though I won't now. Eh? Very shortly, I'm resigning, George. Calling an election. What? But you've only just got in. A landslide at that. Why? I've decided to hand over the policing of Orlingbury, plus a 15-mile area around it, to the World Council. An international force is on the way there now, and within the next couple of hours will have taken over totally from our own troops. But that makes it World Council territory. Totally outside British jurisdiction and laws. They could do any damn thing they want. There'd be nothing we could do to stop them. I know. But I also know, George, what they'll have to do. What is expedient. I'm resigning because I don't have the courage to do it myself. And what is expedient? The body of Tom Harris is to be returned to his home. There's a helicopter on the way there with him now. Over the next few hours, the soldiers of the International Force will have moved out from his cottage, creating an area of approximately 15 miles in diameter, totally free from any population. Then at some time this afternoon, a new trombone will be dropped directly on the cottage. Good God. Afterwards, that area around the cottage will be uninhabitable, at least until the end of the next century. Oh, George, what have we done? Yes. What have you done? Oh, Hemeth. Good Lord, Charles's office. But nobody here. What on earth happened to me? All I remember is a doom-laden, disembodied voice doing Valentine Dahl impressions. This way, this way. Monosyllabic was still scary. And I went that way and nothing. Instead, I wake up in Charles's office at the Ministry feeling rather groggy. How very strange. Ah, there you are, A.P., compass mentors at last. What on earth happened to me, Charles? Ah, you've had a bit of a turn, it would appear. I called you in to give me your up-to-the-minute report and assessment on the situation down at Orlingbury, the Harris family, etc., plots and counterplots. The PM's office seems to be keeping us rather in the dark. But I smell something big afoot. Wondered if you might have gleaned any idea as to what it might be. Then you had this bit of a turn. What is it? Everything all right, A.P.? Oh, why are you staring at me that way? It's very good. I'll give you that. It's ever so good. Pardon? I mean, being honest, you got him off to a tea. He'd be very impressed. Clothes, manner, voice, the whole shooting match. You could probably even fool his wife. But unfortunately, or fortunately, as the case may be, not a colleague of over 20 years. You see, you've missed an essential, one vital essential, and that makes the whole charade suspect. <laughs> but why go to all this trouble on my account? Everything looks real. Big Ben outside the window there appears real enough. The whole set must have cost enough to make a Cecil B. DeMille blanche. Whatever the reason, you are palpably not what you undoubtedly appear. Oh, I say, A.P., that's a bit strong. I mean, you know yourself, I'm not a great one for standing on ceremony when we're by ourselves like this. But hang it all, man, I am still your superior. No, you're not. You're not my superior. You are not Charles Hainsford Wood's CBE. Damn good copy, yes, but not the man himself. In fact, I would go so far as to say, you are one of those alien chappies who I'm rather keen to have a chat with. It. And that we are still somewhere behind the mine. Very astute, Mr. Smith. Very astute indeed. You're quite correct, of course, but I find it incredible that you should detect the subterfuge. The picture, after all, is drawn totally from your memory. Oh, that explains it. The detail which has arrived, so part of the fabric, so extraordinarily ordinary, it wouldn't even cross my subconscious of being worthy of thought. Hence your one tiny mistake. Mistake? Yes, small but vital. In all my long working relationship with the real child, I've never been in his room longer than 15 seconds without him offering me a cup of tea. And you didn't. Ipso facto, you are not he. But, of course, <laughs> the cup of tea. Care for one now? Uh, no. It would, of course, be very stimulating to chat on, Mr. Alien. But I do feel duty calls that I should be on my way. I wonder if you could direct me to the... Tom Harris said. Presumably he's got something just as grand as this to feel comfortable in. Yes, but I'm afraid you're too late. He's not here anymore. Well, perhaps you wouldn't mind me having a scout round in any case. Of course not. 
Try opening that door on your left. Oh, come now. Even I know that's a stationary cupboard. Sure he hasn't crammed himself in there. Just open it. Goodbye, Mr. Smith. It's been a pleasure meeting you. And there he isn't. Make an awfully good living in the variety theatre. Cross between Mike Yarwood and the senior magician. Makes a good impression and vanishes quick as a flash. Right. I must get on. Uh, stationary cupboard it is, then. Good Lord. What now? Kew Gardens? What a pleasant spot. Positively Arcadian, in fact. Oh, there you are, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, I... Oh, good God, he's dead. You're right, I'm afraid. But that is not his body. Simply a copy. As is the body you are wearing. Ah. He does seem to be rather careless with his corpses, doesn't he? Leaves them scattered about all over the place. The second one I bumped into today, in fact... May I inquire whom I have the pleasure of addressing? I am simply designated 642. Oh, how interesting. And economical. In fact, quite fascinating all round. Uh, first time I've ever chatted to a spark of light. Excuse me asking you, but is that all of you? Or have you also got a body lying at home awaiting your return? This is me, my very essence. Huh. I'll save a fortune, laundry bill. Why do you constantly attempt to hide your fear with laughter, Mr. Smith? Gosh, you know my name as well. It's a very sociable sort of place, isn't it? I must explain. It's not exactly fear I'm hiding. More like terror, really. You see, I'm pretty certain I've gone totally potty, or at best ended up in my own highly personalised Alice in Wonderland-type nightmare. But to continue, I do feel that if, as you say, Mr Harris isn't here anymore, I'd be just as happy to push off home and rejoin my poor, old, tired, real carcass, hopeful that by now the aching feet have sorted themselves out. So perhaps you'll be good enough to tell me how on earth I go about it. Is there another door, perhaps, 246? 642. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I'm ever so good on faces, but numbers are always forgetting them. A way out? Very shortly you will be conducted there. But first our council wish to speak to you. We await your arrival. Whenever you are ready, we shall attend. Oh, well, uh, now is as good a time as any. I'd hate to keep them hanging about. Uh, please ask them to attend. Very good. Close your eyes, Mr. Smith. Now open them. Good God! There's thousands... Thousands upon thousands of tiny sparks of light. Tear upon tear, all around. 642. 642. 642. Why has it gone so quiet? What's going on out there? The tanks have been pulled back out of sight. I can't read anyone's minds anymore. The soldiers have disappeared. What is happening? Mm. No, it's impossible. He's coming round. No! Oh. <coughs> I can't seem to hold him any longer. I'll try lifting something. Anything. It doesn't work. My power is fading. I can't hold him unconscious any longer. I mustn't let him wake. Oh. oh. Mrs. Harris, I... Uh, oh, I, I feel as though I've... What's happened to Smith? Why is he lying there looking as though he's a... No, I remember. You damn well took control of my mind, the pair of you. No, stay away. Don't come near me. I promise to behave. You just... Wait a moment. You've changed. I can see it in your eyes. But of course, you wouldn't let me go unless you had to. You've lost the power. That's it, isn't it? You've lost the power. There's no minds anymore. I've searched for miles. There's no minds anywhere. And I can't read yours either. It's, it's so silent, so terribly silent. It's as if my powers had been switched off. Well, you don't need to read my mind, Mrs. Harris, because I'll tell you precisely what I'm thinking. I'm going to ring Mr. Silkin and tell him to get me out of this madhouse forthwith. And, Mrs. Harris, there's not a thing you can do to stop me. Who? Hmm? Mr. Palmer, sir. Jeffrey. What are you waiting for? Put him through immediately. Would it be an order if I inquired after Mr. Smith before I put him through? He's a very old friend of mine. No, Gloria, it would not be an order. I only asked. Sorry, Gloria, I'm a bit overwrought. Now put Jeffrey through, would you? There's a good girl. Very good, sir. Uncle? Jeffrey, are you all right, my boy? Yes, fine. Although I have been somewhat manhandled, and I've also had the rather bizarre experience of my mind being used against my will. Good Lord, how awful. 
promise me you'll mention none of this to your mother. She may not understand. Not a word. I'll fill you in on the details when I return, but I did think I'd better ring in straight away to let you know that Mr. Smith is now in the same condition Tom Harris was. Dead? Apparently. Good. Now, Geoffrey, do you think you could manage to get away from the Harris woman? Yes, sir. That's another thing. She has apparently lost her powers. I believe I can walk out of here any time. Now, Geoffrey, not so quick about the walking out. There's a helicopter of the International Fleet on the way there now, bringing back Tom Harris's body from the crematorium. See it safely into the cottage and then leave. I'll try to organize a lift for you in the helicopter. I can't tell you the reason for his return. Top priority classified. Oh, God. But suffice it to say, the sooner you're out of the area, the better. What about Smith, sir? Shall Smith! I... Just leave him there. Serves the scoundrel damn well right. Turncoat. Right, just lay him on the bed, um, there. Rightio. Up to uh, uh, And down he goes, then, Fitz. Oh, what about this one? You want us to stick him on the stretcher and take him back with us? No, just leave him. He's staying. Uh, here, mm. any uh, idea what's going on here, mate? As we flew in, there wasn't one of our boys. It sights all the uh, foreign troops and what have you, and they seem to be pushing out in a great circle. Uh, I'm afraid, gentlemen, I'm not at liberty to say. It's confidential. Top priority classified. Now, if you'll be good enough to go back to the, um, the, the helicopter, we can all be on our way. Oh, OK, come on. Okay, I'll just get a stretcher. Right on my way. Well, Mrs. Harris, here's your husband, safely home, unharmed as promised. Why? Why what? Why have they returned him? Just be happy he's here. And don't question too deeply. I never do. No, I don't suppose you do. Goodbye. Oh, Tom. Darling. What has happened to us? What's gone wrong? Why have I lost the power? Why? It's the red one, Marge. Yes, I know. Better answer it and get it over with. Eh? Yes, I suppose you're right. Speaking. Thank you for letting me know. The area is now clear, and the plane carrying the bomb, code name Happy Summer, has just set off from Bryce Norton. The drop will take place in six minutes and forty-eight seconds. Mom. Sir, sorry to disturb, but wonderful news. Our man Palmer has managed to get safely out of the area, and your new curtains will be arriving this afternoon. Silk in. Yes, sir? Get out. Get out, you cretin! Mr. Smith, I speak on behalf of all spirits you see here present. It is the collective view I express. I am simply voice... And have no separate being. Left it lying about somewhere and forgot where you put it down, did you? Ah! Mr. Smith, I am touching your mind with hurt because very little time remains to us here and the time for flippancy is long past. No, feel no sense of relief that the aliens are leaving because the fact is that it is you, the peoples of planet Earth, who are the aliens. An experiment in symbiosis that we, the General Council, allowed against our better judgment. An experiment that has failed miserably and will now be terminated. Your mythology had it right in essence, Mr. Smith, but wrong in detail. There was a creation and there was a fight after the creation. Not a physical fight, as man has interpreted it, but cerebral. A clash of opinion. On the one hand, the Supreme Council, the good angels, as your mythology would have it, And on the other, the bad angels, who were simply dissidents. They wanted to settle on the planets using life forms which had already successfully adapted to the planet's environment as host bodies. They advocated simply moving into their minds and taking them over. Physical life versus cerebral life, Mr. Smith. The discussion ranged over millennia. Finally, the council agreed that the dissidents could carry out their experiment on just one planet. A primate life form was found that seemed suitably advanced to be a symbiotic host for the dissidents. The dissidents entered the host minds, and so the experiment began. This moment, 
their being sent away is stored in your racial memory as the fall of Lucifer and the bad angels. And your planet Earth, which was chosen as suitable for the experiment, is the real hell of your mythology. This is Neutrino on project code name Happy Summer Calling Base. Happy Summer Calling Base. Do you read me, Base? Over. We read you loud and clear. Happy Summer. Go ahead. We are now on stipulated hold pattern, circling target zone. Five minutes and counting to drop. I repeat, five minutes and counting to drop. Over. Message received and understood. Over and out. So the peoples of Earth live their short allotted span in hell, and when they die, their unencumbered spirits float free once more to face us, the Supreme Council. The truth of their situation is instantly revealed, and they are given a choice. Either another life on Earth in a new host body, or to remain spirit. It is surprising how many choose to return to your mud ball of a planet, hoping each new life will bring some improvement in their earthly status. But, as the Supreme Council, we also have a duty to the planet itself. Earth is being progressively bespoiled by man. The atmosphere has been polluted to the point where any life at all may become impossible to sustain. If indeed the planet is not decimated by a nuclear holocaust before that point, it cannot be allowed to continue. This is the message we wish you to take back to your government, Mr. Smith. The experiment will be terminated. Nine months exactly from today, no human child shall ever be born again on your planet Earth. The total Homo sapiens species will be irreversibly sterilized. Control one to all units. Control one to all units. Sterilization program to be immediately implemented Earth-wide. Sterilization program to be immediately implemented Earth-wide. Happy summer to base. Happy summer to base. Two minutes and counting. Two minutes and counting. Over. What can I do? It's so quiet without the voices in my head. Tom. Tom. Wake up. Speak to me. Nothing. It just goes on lying there as if you really was a corpse. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Please come back. Please, Mr. Smith. I say, just stay there. I'm not as young as you used to be. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. That's all right. Just tell me what happened. I can't read your mind anymore. It seems I've lost the power. You have. They've removed it from you. From me as well, as it happens. They've decided it's a toy we can well do without. As is life itself. Did you find Tom? Is he coming back soon? Tell me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Harris. He really is dead. Oh, no. He was alive to the moment his spirit was pulled back to his body. Then it was burnt. Burnt? But... But they didn't succeed. They didn't manage to burn it. Look, don't you see? He could still be inside there somewhere. No, Mrs. Harris, you don't mind me saying so. It is now a foolishness to go on hoping. He is not dead. I know he is not dead. Happy summer to base. Happy summer to base. I am moving into final approach pattern now. Repeat, I am moving into final approach pattern now. One minute and counting. One minute and counting. I'm sorry, AP. I just won't accept it. That is, of course, your privilege, Mrs. Harris. You mind if I answer this phone? It's driving me potty. I can't bear an unanswered phone. No, fine. Thank you. Hello? Yes, speaking. Good Lord, Mr. Veer. How terribly nice of you to call. When did you hear this? How long have we got? Good God. And there's no chance of us getting away. Bye, Gloria. Sorry we never made that luncheon date. That was Silken's secretary. Nice young thing. We became firm friends over the years. She accidentally heard our fate being discussed at the highest level. Decided she must ring and warn me. It's too late, unfortunately. Too late? Come with me to the window. We should be able to... Oh, yes, there we are. See that little spot on the horizon? Mm. 
Well, that's rather a special plan, called a neutrino. Carrying a little package that it's going to drop on us any time now. A very dirty little package. What is it? What is it carrying, A.P.? A neutron bomb. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. And here she comes. Any second now. Yes. Goodbye, Mrs. Harris. No. speaking. What? But that's him. Yes. Very good. Keep me informed. Marge. Marge. <laughs> What the devil is it? What's happened? <laughs> it didn't go off. The bomb didn't go off. What? But but that's impossible. They're foolproof. A team went in to discover what had gone wrong. They met no resistance. There was nobody in the cottage, although no one was seen to leave. And they found the bomb, diffused and totally harmless, sitting in the middle of the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> impossible, sir. Don't tell me what's impossible, Geoffrey. I know what's impossible. But I can also tell you it's a fact. It didn't go off. And they've disappeared. They've checked the tapes. And the very second the bomb was due to explode, a third voice was heard to speak. The only other person there was... Exactly. Tom Harris. Don't worry, Sally Love. I'm back now for good. Those were his exact words, according to the tape. But if he's alive, then Smith... Good God. Smith. Get, get out of my way. Sir... Mr. Veer, whatever you do, if A.P. Smith phones in, both Mr. Palmer and I are unobtainable. Um, on extended leave or something, all right? Oh, what a pity. I did want to have a few words with you and Geoffrey before popping in to give the PM a rather vitally important message and then taking Mr. Veer off to a much-delayed lunch. See him? Just slip in now, shall I? But how the devil did you get here, Smith? Tom Harris kindly gave me a lift. With you, Jeff, I do have rather a lot to say to you. For heaven's sake, Jeffrey, stop behaving like a child and, and get from behind that desk. Nothing very awful is going to happen. It's all, man. He, he's a colleague, a civil service colleague. He understands these things. Well, Sam's well. He knows we're secret intruders here, and he thinks it's very nice we've teleported in. <laughs> so he's still got the power as well as you? Yes, but I'll take it away from him as soon as we see him. Shall we go through and get him? No. Let's just sit for a little longer. We've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> How long have you known they had Sam here in this underground atom shelter place? Well, it's all a bit blurry, but I think it was probably the officer at the crematorium who had the knowledge in his mind, and I must have picked it up from him. What exactly happened there? At the crematorium? I think you can take it. It's a bit scary. Now I know you really are alive. I can take anything. <laughs> well... I was warned that I'd be dragged back at the end, at the very moment of death. And so I decided that I must get there earlier. I guessed it would be Axworth Crematorium. So I pictured it, and I waited. I waited for the service that I hoped they'd arranged. I waited for someone there to think of me with such intensity that I'd hear. And finally it came. Almost too late. It was the Padre... As he pressed the button for the coffin to slide into the flame, without knowing it, his mind opened to me, and quick as thought, I was there, and I slid into it, and threw it, into the coffin. Oh. But I couldn't, for some reason, get back into my own body. I could only wrap myself like a protective skin around it. The coffin very quickly burnt away, and I supported the body in the flames. It was terrifying, but fascinating at the same time. It seemed to go on for an eternity... But finally the flame was switched off. 
and I let my body go. And that's all I remember till I heard you scream for me. And there I was, back in my own shell, with the power still intact. Thank God for that. Yes, if I'd been a few seconds later... Let's not think about that. <laughs> you were in time, both to stop the bomb and to teleport the three of us safely out of there. Mm. <laughs> well, share it. What? <laughs> I could do with a little laughter in my life. Well, it's, it's A.P.'s reaction to being flown through the sky without any visible means of support. <laughs> totally calm. <laughs> and then asking, mid-flight, I say, you couldn't by any chance drop me off somewhere near Downing Down Street, Street, would you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I mean. <laughs> uh, what now, Tom? Well, the adventuring's over, Sal. Now we hopefully go back to being a normal, happy family unit. No more scares, no more spacemen, no more magic powers. Just baby Sam and you and me and a cottage in the country. I love you, Sal. Love you, Tom. Hmm. Right, well, we better go and explain our presence to the unsuspecting security forces. Collect Sam from the playroom at the end of the corridor. And my mum. And your mum. And then we'll all go home. Yes, I hear you. When the others leave, you are coming. Coming to take over Earth. I'll tell Daddy. He'll be pleased. Different aliens coming. He's coming with Mummy to collect me now. Bye-bye, new alien men. Bye-bye. John Shrapnel and Maureen O'Brien played Tom and Sally Harris and Timothy West, 642, in With a Whimper to the Grave by Wally K. Daly. A.P. Smith, Donald Hewlett, Prime Minister, Angela Thorne, George Patrick Troughton. Alien Controller, Manning Wilson, Baby Sam and Gloria, Moya Leslie, Doctor, Arnold Diamond, Charles, Henry Stamper, Silkin, Peter Wickham, Geoffrey Palmer, Robert Dawes. Alien, Peter Aker, Vera Margot Boyd, Ray Clive Panto, Sally's mother, Catherine Parr, David and Paul Crawford Logan, Corporal and Vince Michael Jenner, Barry and foreign pilot Mark Rolston. The play was directed by Martin Jenkins.